some pre-calculus concepts that you uh, need to know. The first one is straight lines and straight line functions. If we're talking about tangent lines of graphs, understanding equations of straight lines is pretty important. Um, to talk about the slope, I, I mean, everybody learns slope in grade 10 differently, and you probably have a much more sophisticated understanding of slope now than you did in grade 10. You might be uh, already using notation like this, but in, in grade 10, I, I think you sort of talk about probably, well, look, this is the rise and this is the run. Those words are good uh, when you're talking about slope, but uh, we're going to we're gonna look at these with uh, some terms that are... Uh, more useful for calculus. We're going to talk about the, the change in well y, or whatever that variable happens to be, and the change in x. You're familiar with this Greek letter delta meaning change. It's, uh, it's all written out down here, right? The symbol delta is a Greek letter. stand for change or difference. So instead of grade 10 knowing that slope is rise over run, we're going to think of it as, and I'm pretty sure I have this on the next page. I do. So you don't need to write it there if you don't want. But we're going to think of it as change in y divided by change in x and since mathematicians are, in general, lazy people, they come up with symbols. Like, Well, they don't come up with symbols. They're even too lazy to come up with their own symbols, so they take Greek letters and whatever they can find. Let's make this triangle stand for change in, change in Y over change in X, because that's going to lead into some of what we talk about in the first half of this course, where, where some of the symbols come from. Okay, so slope being a comparison of two changes. How is this changing as compared to this? It's just a ratio of how two quantities are changing. That's all a slope is. You get a formula that looks something like that in grade 10. And again, it's it's just come, it comes from you know y2 minus y1, just meaning the difference in the y coordinates of something between divided by difference in x coordinates. Um, not trying to insult your intelligence by putting all this in here, but a line that goes up as x increases has a positive slope. A line that goes down as x increases has a negative slope, right? Up, down. A line that's horizontal has a slope of zero. A vertical line has a slope ratio that is undefined, so it has no slope. Why would that be? Yeah, there's no change. There's there's an you know an infinite change in in uh, y, but what is this, right? There's no change in no change in x here. You can um, it it depends. Now you might say, well, let's look at it this way. I don't know why I'm not using the things I made on the internet for this, but uh, I will. Um, it, if you take line a line and start making it steeper and steeper, what's happening to the slope here? It's increasing. So by that logic, whoa. by that logic, the, the steeper you make it, the higher it's getting. So if I take this to the extreme and make it vertical, what should its slope be? It should be infinity, right? So, but we can't say that because if you could equally say, what if I take a line and start making it less steep? and get to the point of being vertical. Like you don't know which, which way you're approaching it from. Um, if, you, if you take a line and make it steeper one way, it gets to be positive infinity. It would be much better if I go back here now and find this somewhere. Uh, this will work. I hope. Okay, if I take two points and I make them steeper and steeper here, right? The steeper you make the line, let's put one in the middle, the origin. If I make this steeper and steeper, the slope is getting higher and higher, right? So you'd think, well, this, it should be infinity, right? Because it's as steep as I can make it. I can't make it any steeper than that. But you could also go the other way and say, well, I'm going to take this line and make it less and less steep. It's getting more and more negative. 
and get to exactly the same type of line, right? It's a vertical line. What would that, in that case, what would you say it is? If you're going down like this, it's increasing negatively. So what would a person doing it that way would say? It's not infinity, it's negative infinity. So if it could be positive infinity or negative infinity, that's why you say it's uh, undefined, because it could be one or the other. All right? Anyways, equations of lines. Oh, well, sorry, one other, one other thing in here that's worth uh, remembering. Parallel lines have the same slope. I'm pretty sure you're okay with that. Perpendicular lines have slopes that are negative reciprocals. Not that that comes up all that often, but at some point you might have to know that fact, and you'll you'll have to look it up or come back here and find it. So if if you if you drew any two uh, any two lines that are perpendicular, uh, why don't I go back to my nice grid? If I if I figure out this and say that that slope is what's the slope of that going to be? Two thirds. So if I drew a line here somewhere, I'm not I can't draw in here. It's the internet, right? But uh, if I drew it, if I drew a line here that's perpendicular, what is the slope of that? Negative three over two, right? Because it's going to go from that point down to there. But that's something that I'm sure you all know or can remember. Horizontal and vertical lines seem to be difficult in grade ten to understand because their equations don't look like the other equations. If you have a horizontal line here through uh, two. The equation of that is just y equals two. The y coordinate is always two. The, the x coordinate can be anything, right? If you if you if you put the the line completely horizontally there, anywhere you go on that line, y is two. X can be anything. As soon as you do something else, well, then there's a specific relationship between x and y. One determines the other. But here, y is always two, and x can be anything. And similarly, if you made it vertical, now y can be anything, but x in that case always has to be 3. All right, so horizontal vertical lines, that's going to be a sort of an assumed thing that you know, x equals 3 and so on. Uh, for, for lines that have a slope, you probably just learned somebody says y equals mx plus b. There's no magic to those letters. Actually, it probably would make more sense to call it ax plus b, but whatever. The first, you know, that, that value is the, is the slope of the line and that value is the, the y-intercept. Slope-intercept form is that form that you're all used to and that's probably the form that most of you would always put your line equations into if you need to. There are other forms that are going to be things you have to be comfortable with. And one that you're probably not so used to using is point-slope form. Let's say we have a line that goes through. Um, where are we going to go? Like that. <clears throat> if we want to give an equation of that line... How many different ways can we write the equation of that line? Okay, I want you to do that right now. Uh, let's copy the graph over here first. So for that, 